Okay, I'm expecting a couple of these today. Those brave, brave FedEx drivers delivering packages in a foot of snow. Oh, so this is actually not <coughs> what I expected. I was expecting something else. But, not gonna complain. So, like I said, I have uh, ordered a couple of things today. This was one of them. Well, I ordered a couple of days ago, but getting today. So this was one. And I also ordered a new Galaxy Watch 3. And honestly, I thought this was the watch because the box was kind of light. And they said it requires a signature and the FedEx driver just left it in front of the house with no signature. Uh, which I think they actually suspended that because of the global pandemic. So, yeah, I thought this was the watch, but it turns out that's the tablet. And, okay, well, let's unbox the tablet then. So, as always, this is not really a review or a fancy unboxing or anything like that, but there are a couple of things that I want to look at, a couple of questions I want answered. I was um, not sure about the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. I wanted a new tablet, but I wasn't sure about this specific model. I just feel like it might be too big. So the question is, is it too big? And I'm gonna compare it to a couple of tablets I currently use, including my Surface tablet and including my Galaxy Tab S5e. Now, spec-wise, it's power and features. I know this is the best you can get right now from Android. Just absolutely the best. There's no question about it. In the box, a little bit more than what you get with the phone this year. So we have the S Pen. Very nice silver. Cool. And we actually have a charger. So they still added a charger to it. That's nice. Now this is a regular uh, fast charger. So whatever it is, I don't know, 15 watt. I actually have the 45 watt charger here. And that's one of the cool features of the Tab S7. It supports a super fast charger with a 45 watt charger. Let's see what else we get. So there's a cable. I'm just gonna leave it in there for now. Memory card removal tool. I was gonna say SIM card, but there's of course no SIM card there. And some basic paperwork here. We don't care about that. Yeah, I went with 256 gigabyte model with eight gigabytes of RAM. Normally I would just get a smaller one, like 128 gigabytes is plenty, I think, especially since you can add a memory card and extend that memory. But by weird math that Samsung is doing right now, it was only $25 more to get a next step up 256 gigabyte model with eight gigs of RAM, kind of a no brainer. So here's the tablet itself. Try to be careful there. So, oh, okay. I think I'm doing the wrong. It just kind of opens up at the bottom here, I think. There we go. And also I wanted the silver model. Everyone seemed to have the, uh, the new Mystic Bronze, because that was a hero collar, meaning they push everything in that particular collar. Some people got the black one. I wanted the silver one. It's really cold right now, so my fingers leave like uh, condensation marks on it, just because it just came from outside and it's super chilly. So yeah, my biggest question is, is it too big? No pun intended. And it is pretty big, honestly. It's a little bit hard to handle, especially with one hand. And two hands, yeah, it's fine. But I kind of hate how they continue to do this. They just keep making things bigger and bigger. To be clear, they don't. You can still get a smaller Tab S7, not a Plus model. But they always do this sneaky thing when they change something just enough to push you to the, to the next step up pay a couple hundred dollars more for a bigger size. And in this case, it was the uh, Super AMOLED screen. The smaller model comes with an LCD screen. And 
I don't want an LCD in 2020. If I buy a new tablet, it better be a Super AMOLED. So this was a sneaky way how they got me to pay more for this tablet. Okay, let's give it a minute to load, set it up. I'll be right back in a sec. Okay. Well, hello to you too. So here it comes. So big, I can barely even fit it in my frame here. And it can't go back anymore. Okay. So, the main question, is it too big? It's big. And normally, I don't know, I think it would actually kind of be a deal breaker for me, just the size. But considering that it feels like there's pretty much no other options, yeah, I could go with something like an iPad, but I don't like Apple stuff. I could just stay with my S5e, which is great, but it's starting to kind of struggle with some of the workload that I, that I give it. So if I want a new tablet and I don't want to go to the LCD screen, this seems like the only option I have. I'm going to have to use it for a couple of days to actually see if I can live with it or not. I assume I can. I assume I will learn to. Um, but you never know. I like to just kind of relax, you know, like before bad time, just lay in bed and grab a tablet and, you know, browse or maybe play a little game. And when you get a tablet that is basically doing the size of a computer now, so for reference, this is a, a Microsoft Surface here, and it's not that much bigger. Let me just do this. So as you can see, it's actually pretty close in size to the Surface. A little bit bigger screen though, and it's a little bit narrower. But that makes it a, a big tablet. Everyone wants to make a, a computer replacement, a laptop replacement. Someone just want a tablet. That's why I did not get a keyboard case for it. I just want to have a tablet. Now, what about the thickness of it compared to the S5e? On paper, they claim to be about the same thickness, like a difference of half a millimeter. But I kind of have to question that. When I look at it now, it looks like there's more than just half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half. It's still a pretty thin tablet, all things considered. So again, to compare with the Surface, which of course is more of a Windows machine in a tablet format, it's about half the thickness of that. Other than that, it's great, it looks good. I'm not going to go over all the features. There are tons of reviews that cover all that. Just going to have to give it a try. And if any of you are wondering how it went, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll be happy to update. Now, as a little bonus too, this came in a separate package from Amazon. Today also, right before the tablet came in. Maybe half an hour before the tablet came in. So pretty good timing. Now, I got it from Amazon because it's a little bit cheaper. And this is the color I wanted. For some reason, the black cover is 80 bucks everywhere. But the gray one here was $68. Still expensive for a case, but it's worth it when you think about how expensive those tablets are there. But 950 bucks. Another point, I didn't pay 950 bucks for it. I'm only paying about 450 bucks. And that's because they have discounts right now. They have a trade-in deal that they're actually giving me more money for my Tab S5e right here than I paid for. So that's another reason why it's kind of hard to pass off. And I like this book covers. Uh, I like them better than the keyboard covers. Once again, I don't want a tablet. Or I'm sorry, I do want a tablet. I don't want a laptop replacement and everyone keeps pushing these keyboards on us that's why I feel that I'm sure a lot of people like are like me they just don't want it so the cover is kind of cool your S Pen hides in there this light gray color here they call it mystic silver 
I know what's going on with me today, I can't talk. I'm too excited. This kind of interesting, this part here, I thought it was going to be black, it's just gray. So it looks good with this combination because, well, it's a Mystic Silver cover and a Mystic Silver tablet, so they kind of meant to go together. But there's nothing wrong with mixing it up a little bit. You can always pick a different color cover. This was weird to me. Get out of here at first, but seeing how it's supposed to hold your S pen in there safely makes sense. So let's see. Just put it there. This goes in the back. I kind of like the cutout here. It makes it easier to find a, a spot for your for your S pen. And also something that I that I saw. It's supposed to stick to the top as well. Yeah, right there. So the S pen sticks to the top and the back. Okay, so after using it for the evening and overnight, well, I was up pretty late last night playing with this thing and some more this morning. Here is my final conclusion. The question of the day, is this tablet too big? And so in my honest opinion, it kind of is, it is too damn big. Is it a deal breaker? It might be for some. Um, I thought it would be for me. And honestly, I would still prefer a smaller tablet, like the size of a S5e or you know, S6 would be the same size. And S7 is about the same size. Which, of course, is available. But unfortunately, for something... Um, here we go. A little bit less glare. For something smaller that I would prefer, just uh, an LCD screen feels like a, too much of a compromise in 2020. I mean, this is really kind of an outdated technology for a tablet anyway. We have been using Super AMOLED screens on Samsung tablets forever. I still have a Galaxy S2, Tab S2. I had S4, I had S6, S5e, which surprisingly is actually better in my opinion than S6. And then they come out with S7 and it has an LCD screen. The screen is fine. It's a beautiful screen. And if you look into buy a Galaxy Tab S7, don't hesitate. It's still going to look amazing. Just be aware that if you're used to a Super AMOLED screens and the deep black colors, especially if you use your tablet in the dark a lot, that going back to LCD is going to be noticeable and it's really going to feel like a, a downgrade. So with that said, I would take a larger size tablet just for the screen. Everything else, just as expected, is great. It sounds amazing. It's almost too loud. The speakers are, are crazy. The um, the screen, of course, is great, as you would expect from a new Samsung product. There are really no complaints there. Performance is good. So, very happy with all of that stuff. I just wish it was a little bit smaller. It's just a little bit awkward to handle sometimes. Especially when you have to move around the S Pen too, which is a little bit of annoyance as well. With this case at least, I constantly have to take it out of the case, put it on top of the tablet, or put it in the back of the tablet, and right there, to have it charged. Then I want to put the tablet away, I have to take it out, I have to move it back to the case, I put it away. And it just constantly, this game, this mindfulness of where your S Pen is at all times, it's starting to get a little bit annoying. Maybe I just need to get used to it. And the case, by the way, being an original Samsung accessory, I like it. It's nice. There's no problems with the case itself. The only uh, comment I want to make on it, I think is interesting, is that a lot of people in reviews of it on, on Amazon, for example, say that because they're magnets, there's uh, not 
enough protection like your tablet can slide out of the case and fall i don't know what those people are doing <laughs> for the tablet to slide out i feel like the magnets are actually a little bit too strong like i'm not gonna shake it but if i want to sometimes i want to just take a tablet out and then like i have to almost force it out of there like they're they're strong magnets it's not sliding anywhere trust me on that yeah it, it hasn't moved a millimeter so I wouldn't worry about magnets if you interested in a case like this. It'll stay. I'll keep it. Also the weight. It's a little bit on the heavier side, but of course, being a bigger tablet, there's nothing else that I like. I'm not into Apple stuff, and Samsung is the only one that makes high-end Android tablets anymore. If they ever quit, that will be done. We'll be done with tablets. I wish they would concentrate more on tablets really and not laptop replacements because this carrying this around is gonna feel like basically carrying another laptop with me which i already carry surface pro and i carry my razor blade and now i'm gonna carry this and all the same size the same weight in fact this feels like it weights more than a razor blade but it's a good tablet for sure i recommend it just be mindful of that size if you can go to best buy safely and see for yourself see if you think it'll be fine it feels smaller out on display at best buy than it is when you actually handle it in real life at the same time though once you start using it in a day or two you, you start getting used to the size of it and it doesn't feel like as much of a big deal it's just whenever i have to like put it away and take it out that's when a larger size and weight gets a little bit annoying but when i'm actually using the tablet the experience is just amazing the best screen hands down the best pickers what else can you ask for uh it's the beast so thanks for watching as always any other questions go ahead and ask i'll reply later